call a spade a spade here. This is not the holy grail of criminal cases, you know, that Trump is facing. I mean, it is a lot. It's a lot of felonies, no question about it. And when you look at him in general, it is not that serious of a case in the sense that he's not going to probably do a lot, if any, time. You know, guess what? Anything, anything that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth, anything, as long as it's material and relevant, it's coming in because it's what? Come on, you know what it is. It's a statement of a party opponent. So it comes into evidence. Um, oh. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers coming to you with my pearl handled pistol cufflinks. I am your, and your alone, board certified criminal defense lawyer, and you know who you are. Um, we are also accompanied by Michael Rivers, who's behind the camera, behind the ideas. Today we're going to react to Trump. Trump, not all things Trump, just the Manhattan documents case, you know, where he falsified documents. And the reason that's a big deal, uh, we'll get into that, and we'll get into the proof, you know, and we'll, and I'll try to give this to you straight, you know, just what the strengths and weaknesses are without a whole lot of invective from me, if I can avoid that. Might be hard, but we'll do it. Because, you know, when you're sitting there in your easy chair with your glass of wine or your beer or, or your Kool-Aid, depending upon your age um, and, and gender, uh, you're sitting there and you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, what is, what is Bruce's grandma up to at this point, you know? And, you know, she's down in, you know, in my basement and I've got her cleaning uh, because she had a party last night and uh, did a little damage. and So, I mean, she actually just destroyed the place, so I'm making her clean the basement. And, um, you know, she almost took off. I grabbed her. I said, you're not leaving the house because, you know, she's only got one leg. And, um, and you know, I just I got to get control of her situation. So what do I do? I went to eForms.com, and I got power of attorney, and that was really easy to do. Eforms.com is a very effective way to avoid the high cost of lawyers when you need a legal document to protect yourself. So if you sell a car to somebody, you need a bill of sale because let's say he doesn't transfer the title or she um, and all of a sudden gets a bunch of tickets. Well, they're in your name now, you know, um, or let's say they get in that car accident. You don't have the bill of sale. The car is still in your name. You might have some liability. So you go to eforms.com, any kind of business agreement, any kind of uh, bill of sale, rental agreement, power of attorney, any kind of document you need will keep you out of court because you've got it covered. eforms.com to avoid costly lawyers because I would just charge you a ton of money for the same thing and I would just go to eforms.com and get it anyway. So avoid guys like me. Unless you're going to trial. That's, then you need me. But for eforms.com, handles all your document needs. Okay, let's talk about Trump. Trump's going to trial on Monday. And he's going to trial in Manhattan. He has tried everything he possibly can try to, to avoid going to trial. They've had, I think, two or three motions to the Court of Appeals. And, and they, they were <laughs> dead on arrival. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen somebody go to the Court of Appeals so many times on frivolous stuff. So so let's just kind of do a deep dive into what we're dealing with. You know, you get charged with a crime. There's a procedure that you go through. You have the initial appearance. And the initial appearance is where they determine conditions of release or bail. And then they read you the complaint on the record or the indictment. And you usually waive that. So then they set it for some kind of pretrial conference. And then if you have constitutional issues, so for example, if there was a search without a warrant, or if they uh, did a um, interview with you while you're in custody, but they don't read you your Miranda rights, then you, if you have any, those are constitutional issues and also called suppression issues. So if you have those, then you have a hearing to determine whether they can use that evidence. Because if cops obtain evidence in violation of your constitutional rights, guess what? They can't use it. It's called fruit of the poisonous tree. 
Then uh, they set up for a settlement conference, and that's your last ditch effort to try to settle the case. And then, um, and then sometimes before the settlement conference, there there may be some motions. Uh, mo- they call them motions in limine. Motions in limine are hearings outside the presence of the jury because you could have, because objecting is going to be too arduous. In other words, you got complex legal issues that you need to deal with, and objecting in front of the jury is only going to you know, we're going to talk about all this shit and they're going to hear what we're talking about. So, um, and if the judge rules that the evidence doesn't come in and they just heard about all this stuff, how can you unring the bell basically? And then they have, and then they have a trial. Okay. A trial, the anatomy of a trial is this. Yeah. First you have a jury selection and in Trump's case, they're going to call up 500 citizens of New York, uh, for jury selection. This is going to be a big process. Usually it's not that big a deal. You know, usually a couple hours, you know, or an afternoon. Um, but And in a murder case, uh, like a murder one case, they take one juror at a time. One juror at a time. I'm not sure how they're going to do it in this case. You know, there's two different ways you can do it. You can strike as you go, and I'll tell you a little bit more about strikes. Um, or you can... Um, Or you can have a panel method and strike at the end. Let's talk about what that means. So the jury is sitting there. And if you have the panel method, you've got probably 21 people sitting in the box, right? And they they do a questionnaire. They're doing a questionnaire in this case. So everybody fills this thing out. And they put down, you know, do you have a scheduling issue? Have you heard about this case? Have, you know, who fucking hasn't heard about it? You're, anybody that says they haven't heard about it, guess what? They're probably lying. Everybody in New York's got an opinion of Trump. There's almost nobody that hasn't heard of Trump. There's, and he's so out there. You know, one of the motions that he filed with the Court of Appeals is that, well, there's just been too much pretrial publicity. We, I need more time. You know, and basically he wants an indefinite stay. And then the Court of Appeals said, well, look, you're responsible for 90% of the the pretrial uh, publicity, and you're the one who making all these public statement and, and social media posts, so no. And it was dead on, I mean, just dead when, he, when it came to it. And I don't see, I've never seen as much interlock, we call them interlocutory appeals. When, uh, when a matter's pending, you generally don't get to go to the Court of Appeals. But Trump's lawyers just seem to think that they can do that, you know, ad nauseum. So you're going to have this jury selection. You get all these questionnaires, you know. So they're going to assemble on Monday morning. And it's going to be a shit show because you're going to have Secret Service. You're going to have all these lawyers. You're going to have all these, you know, he's spent like $76 million on lawyers so far. You know, this is just on, on bullshit, you know. And, it's, and the campaign, you know, the RNC is the one who's paying his, his legal bills. Imagine, I want, to, I want to elect you as president, here's my $10. Oh, but it's not going to your re-election campaign, it's going to fund your criminal trial. How he doesn't have to claim that as income is beyond me, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, so they get all these questionnaires, and the questionnaires will ask stuff like, have you heard of this case? Um, you know, it doesn't ask your political affiliation, but what kind of news do you watch? Uh, do you, you know, are you a Trump supporter? Have you been to a, have you been to a Trump rally? Um, or are you a Trump hater? Do you, have you campaigned against Trump? You know, what, whatever the case may be, the idea with the questionnaires is that hopefully they can read through a bunch of those fairly quickly so that you can see the people who are biased and cannot be fair right away. Some people want to get on a jury. You know, some people really don't want to get on a jury. If you don't want to get on jury duty, all you have to say is, I can't be fair. That's all you have to say, honestly. And nobody wants you on the jury if you can't be fair. But it really is a solemn civic duty, and it's really one of the only times that the government calls on you to you, for you to participate in government, and it is so important. I mean, both to the government and to the defendant. It's really important that, and I've seen it over and over again. I think juries really try to get it right. I think they try to be fair, and um, and I trust it. I really do. It, you know, I've had two lawyers on the jury, and they both have screwed me. So I'll never have another lawyer on the jury as long as I live. 
Uh, but I try a lot of cases and, and I know what works and what doesn't work. And so when you get into what they call voir dire or voir dire, depend upon what part of the country you're from, um, what will happen is uh, the judge will ask a bunch of questions. And then the defense will ask a bunch of questions. And then the government will ask a bunch of questions. And the judge is really in charge of it all. In federal court, you almost get no voir dire. Um, it's almost all done by the court. You might get five minutes, ten minutes. And the idea is you ask intrusive questions to see if they can be fair. And it's not meant to embarrass anybody. It's just, you know, oh, you know, I, it's like save it's a domestic violence case. Um, I see that you've um, filed an order of protection on behalf of your daughter. What happened there? And she'll tell you, and it's like, well, do you think this is the right kind? No, I don't think this is the right kind of case for me. I don't think I can be fair. Or, yeah, that was a different time. It was 20 years ago. I can be fair, you know, I, whatever. Or, yeah, I, I worked for Trump. Uh, not Trump directly, but I worked for his hotels, and they stiffed me on fees, and I just, I can't be fair to Trump. Or... I've been at Trump's rallies, and I love what he has to say. Absolutely, I'm all for Trump. You know, well, then you can't be fair to the government. You, so, that, so that's kind of what goes on. Now, when I said strike uh, as you go or strike at the end, you get what they call preemptory challenges. Preemptory challenges, you can strike anybody on the jury for any or no reason as long as it's not one of the protected reasons. You can't strike somebody on the jury for race. Uh, religion, or usually sexually or orientation, but nobody usually gives a shit about that anyway. So, but it's really race, and and if and if let's say um, Trump is getting rid of all the black people on, on the jury, well, you can make what they call a Batson challenge, and uh, and so you can say, Judge, um, we believe there's a whole process that you you go through, and it says you make this Batson challenge, and they have to come up with a race neutral reason. Um, why they struck that person, and you really have to have sh kind of show a pattern, you know, pattern of the questioning, pattern of of uh, the striking, and so I think in this case, I think the defense gets the, I think they get ten preemptory challenges, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not really sure. Uh, it's New York law, so here here the defense gets five, and the prosecutor gets three. If it's a homicide, it's it's much more. This is going to probably be much more because it's going to be so many more people. Um, and so they whittle it down to 12 jurors, plus probably going to want one or two alternates. Okay? So then what? Then the prosecutor gets up and gives his opening remarks. Can't be argument. You can't get up there and say... That this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, that you're going to have to find him not guilty because, you know, this is what, you know, you can say this is what the evidence shows, but you can't have an argument. That's reserved for your closing statement. So then the defense has the choice at that point to either get up and give their closing or, or st opening statement, or they can reserve it until their case in chief. Then the state brings their witnesses and through the witnesses, they'll present evidence, and I'm going to go into some of the evidence here in a second. And then uh, the de uh, defense cross-examines, and and the defense can bring in wit evidence through these witnesses too, if if that makes sense. And then the defense, then the the state rests, and usually at the end of the state's case, the defense will make a motion for judgment of acquittal. Now, if the judge grants that, the case is over. He walks, and it's not appealable because it hasn't gone to the jury yet. But generally speaking, it almost is never granted. Um, generally, there's enough to get to the jury. You don't have to have beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's got to be, got to be that it's reasonable that a jury could find him guilty, or her, depending upon the defendant. Then the, it'll be the state's or the defendant's case in chief, and the defendant will. Um, can bring witnesses and evidence, and then the state cross-examines and challenges their evidence, and then this the defense rests, and then at the close of the defense's case, then uh, the state can present rebuttal evidence. So the, the state can have one last shot, but it's got to be confined to what was presented by the defense. 
And then we have closing arguments. The state goes, gives their closing argument, defense goes, and then the, uh, the state will have the chance for a rebuttal again. So that's, that's the anatomy of a case. Now, in this case, Trump is charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover up another crime, basically. And in this case, the other crime, there's two kind of crimes here. One, he's falsifying these records, and, and, and it, there's a tax thing that's really kind of interesting on in this because the allegation is that you've got two people that they're covering up. Uh, the Karen McDougal, which was an affair from like 2006, um, Playboy model. She says they had an affair for like a year. And then they have um, uh, Stormy Daniels, and she was at a golf tournament. They had sex, uh, allegedly. And, um, and then they paid her some money. So they paid both of these people money. And Michael Cohen, who went to prison for this, Remember, he went to prison. He worked for Trump, and he went to prison for things he did for Trump. He arranged to have money paid to David Pecker to do a catch or to Karen McDougal for one hundred fifty thousand dollars through through David Pecker and did what they call a catch and kill. In other words, the National Enquirer got the story and, and killed it. Then they did uh, a, a one hundred thirty thousand dollar payment to Stormy Daniels, and they did that by having Michael Cohen um, take money out of his house, basically a HELOC, you know, home equity line of credit, 130000 and then Trump reimbursed him. And two things that are incredible about this, or important, when, when related to the charges. In this case, the, you've got these business records showing that these payments were made to Cohen as legal fees, which they weren't. They weren't legal fees. And so you got some tax implications there because he probably deducted them from, from his taxes. Then you also have um, them not being disclosed in the federal election rules. And, because, and you look at the timing. He, the Trump's defense is I just didn't want Melania to find out. And... Well, let, let's let's play a little clip of uh, of some of the evidence that, that they're definitely going to hear, and we'll talk about some of the witnesses here in a second. So let's listen to the recording of Michael Cohen um, talking to Donald Trump. So I'm, I'm I'm all over that, and I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be what financing? We'll have to pay me. So no, 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 no. I got it. No, no, no. So, Cohen made that recording, and what did this loyal fuck to, to to make a recording of your boss like that? But why do you think he did that? He did that because he knew this was going to happen, or or it's possible. The whole reason behind this, you know, this setting this up was because of the election. Remember, there his little comments with Billy Bush and how that came out. And then all of a sudden, and that was a big deal. So all of a sudden, this stuff with Stormy Daniels comes out and, and Karen McDougal, and, and, and they're killing it by paying them off. You ostensibly, I, you can't really do that because you have to disclose it because it's, it's a campaign contribution, really, and you have to disclose it. But instead of disclosing it, what they did was they hid it as attorney's fees. And you can't do that. Now, people say, oh, they're going after Trump. This is uh, Biden's DOJ, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is not Biden's DOJ. This is the, this is the Manhattan District Attorney. And, you know, uh, the prosecutor in this case had gone after another guy for 117 documents. Um, and, and let's just call a spade a spade here. This is not the holy grail of criminal cases, you know, that Trump is facing. I mean, it is a lot. It's a lot of felonies, no question about it. And when you look at him in general, it is not that serious of a case in the sense that he's not going to probably do a lot, if any, time. In a serious infraction, really, is the way he's treated the judicial system and, and, 
and people within it, specific people, like, like the judge's daughter. Why would you go after the judge's daughter? That makes no sense. But he's created his own worst enemy kind of thing. Look at the motions and limiting. Oh my God. You know, one of the things that I, that I shake my head at, these lawyers, it seems, are th in, in all the cases, are throwing everything at the kitchen sink. You know, they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink. They're throwing everything to try to um, delay, delay, delay. I mean, that's his main tactic. You know, when I handle a case, I raise only the issues that I think are going to be successful. You know, I don't throw everything uh, at the judge. The people should be precluded from suborning Michael Cohen's perjury. <laughs> you know, one of the things when you, when you file a motion you try not to use invective and, you know, strong language. You know, you just try to make your point, and I think it gives you more credibility. So they tried to get Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen uh, to be excluded from uh, from the case. The judge denied that summarily. Um, the court should preclude the people from arguing that President Trump sought to improperly influence the 2016 election. Denied. Um, the court should uh, preclude arguments on the intent to defraud, element number 10. Uh, the court should preclude evidence and argument concerning the so-called catch-and-kill scheme. That's all part of the whole indictment. Um, let's see. Yeah, they, they preclude testimony from Dino, from Karen McDougal, from Clifford, uh, and I think they, I think they kept out the Hollywood Access recording. I think the judge did do that, did grant that one. The court should preclude the people from presenting meritless arguments concerning uh, Fika's ambit. The uh, oh, the alleged payments to McDougal and Clifford did not, as a matter of law, violate Fika. Oh, that's uh, the Federal Election uh, Campaign Act. Um, the alleged payments were not made for the purpose of influencing the election. You know... That's an argument. That that isn't that, that that it's the state's case. And if you if you take away that, you got to dismiss the case. Um, absent on offer of proof, the people should be precluded from introducing nearly one hundred statements they seek to attribute to President Trump. One of the worst things that these lawyers have to deal with is President Trump himself. You got a former president who loves, loves, loves to post, who loves, loves, loves to, to get in front of the camera, who loves, loves, loves to talk about the facts of the case. Guess what? Anything, anything that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth, anything, as long as it's material and relevant, it's coming in because it's what? Come on, you know what it is. It's a statement of a party opponent. So it comes into evidence. Um, so, yeah, they, their motions in limine were basically 44 pages. And, you know, the, the court granted some of them, like the Billy Bush, you know, who, who needs that? I mean, that's really not material to what we're dealing with here, right? Um, he didn't exclude the existence of it. But the substance of it, he, he excluded. And the reason that's important is because the timing of when that Billy Bush tape came out, um, what was happening next was, you know, a flood of two more lawsuits or two more potential damaging disclosures, you know, the Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal stuff. And so... The timing of that was critical because it's late October. The election is just around the corner. And we all saw what happened with Hillary Clinton, you know, when uh, when we had those late disclosures by... Uh, Julian Assange. No, by Comey. By, oh, oh. We, we, you know, those late disclosures by James Comey um, that she was being investigated. And all of a sudden, not it wasn't... That, that sunk her. I guarantee you that sunk her, her ticket. So... It's, it's really at a critical time. It's, it's not like it's a year before the election and it doesn't matter. Um, and But Trump, so 
both sides are going to be able to argue their case. Trump's going to be able to argue that, you know, look, I didn't give a shit about that. I really cared about whether Melania heard these allegations or not. He's going to say they're not true. But, and then here's the other thing. Trump says he's going to testify in this case. Guess what? He ain't going to fucking testify. There's no way on this God's green earth that he's going to testify. I guarantee it. You know, he's so full of bluster. And there's just so many minds that he can step in, um, you know, that... I just I think there's no way that he's going to testify. But let's talk about who is going to testify. Now, Alan Weisselberg, he, he, he's not required by his plea agreement to testify. But guess what? He just got popped for perjury. And he's, just, and he's, he's a Trump loyalist. And Michael Cohen, lying to the government, convicted. Stormy Daniels, she said one thing. You know, she said the fair never happened. But is that even material? Think about that. Think about this for a second. The existence of the affair is not really the issue. It's the disclosure that there was an affair. You know, that that's really the issue. And then how to pay, make the payoff and then cover it up. That's the issue. And what was the impact of that on the, on the federal election uh, laws? So that is the government's case in a nutshell. And... A lot of people would say, oh, look at Michael Cohen. He's a liar. You can't trust the goddamn thing he says, blah, blah, blah. Well, that may be true. You know, there, and he's got an ax to grind with Trump because he feels like he got fucked over by Trump. So, so there's, some, there's some, but that's a credibility determination by the jury. And guess what? There isn't one thing, not one single thing that Michael Cohen is going to testify to that won't be backed up either by a recording or a document. And that's the, that's the rub there for Trump. Because they're going to, they try to preclude him and the judges says, there's, there's no reason to preclude these witnesses. And Stormy Daniels, similarly, they're going to take this letter that she wrote saying this affair never happened. And then she's going to say it did happen. And they're going to jam that up her ass, you know, and they're going to try to discredit her. But in a way, it doesn't fucking matter because the documents were filed, the payments were made, and they were disguised as legal fees, and they weren't. Michael Cohen took out a home equity line of credit to, um, to hide, to absolutely hide what Trump was talking about. So Alan Weisselberg, so you, you look at these people that Trump has surrounded himself with, you know, there's so many people that have gone to prison. But, you know, Alan Weisselberg just got five months for lying in court on the, uh, on, on the um, asset fraud case, you know, the tax fraud case, where the organization and Trump lied about the valuation of things. And, that, and Alan Weisselberg's got five months in prison uh, for lying. Michael Cohen, he got 36 months in federal prison for lying. You got... Uh, these these people surround you got Bannon who who who's got a a, a prison sentence, you got uh, Manafort who who got a prison sentence, you got all these people around Trump, and and I've never seen anything like it in my life. Now people are gonna say, oh, it's just the DOJ, blah blah blah. Here's the thing, it they a lot of these people were tried by a jury, tried by a jury, and a jury is the one that sent them to prison, right? And if you know, and Trump, we're gonna we're gonna win, we're gonna win, we're gonna win. Show me one legal battle that Trump has won so far. You know, he he had the, you know, the Trump organization uh, was found guilty last year of tax fraud and ordered to pay over a million dollars. You have Trump himself being found guilty of tax and bank fraud. The walls seem like they're close. I, I just can't imagine having this much fucking shit to deal with. I mean, he still has three other criminal cases, high profile. I mean, and why do you think he spent $76 million? I mean, he could almost pay G, e. Jean Carroll off with that. And so he's got an $88 million judgment against him with her. And he's got a $450 million judgment against him from the state of New York. 
it's just a lot. It's it's just is an absolute lot. So we're gonna watch this, and then there won't be cameras in the courtroom on this case, unfortunately. I wish there were, but Trump's got to be there every day. That's the other thing. You know, this isn't like the E.J. Carroll case where he can phone it in. He's got to be there every single day. Now, is he going to testify? They can't make him. And, and if he doesn't testify, you can't draw an adverse inference. It's not like a civil case. So. But the uh, yeah, standard of proof, you say that, is much higher? Yeah. But the government here is not, this is not like, uh, um, what's the fucking AG's name? No. The AG. The chick. The oh, uh, Daniel. Letitia James. Oh, Letitia. It's not like the case with Letitia James. Guess what? She Her burden of proof was just um, preponderance of the evidence, which meant it's slightly more true than not true. And Trump's, um, the, the standard of proof in a criminal case, which is what these four criminal cases, starting with the Manhattan case, is beyond a reasonable doubt. It's the highest standard. That, and, and what the judge will instruct the jury is that it's the standard of proof that one would use in your most important affairs. And there's no like certain mathematical equation for it, but it's the highest standard in our judicial system. Take a look at this, um, this pyramid. So let's say... Um, cop wants to pull you over. That's the lowest level of proof. It's a reasonable and articulable suspicion. Terry, Terry versus Ohio. Civil standard is, or, oh, and then just to get somebody charged with a crime is probable cause. Slightly more true than not true. And preponderance of the evidence and probable cause, very similar standards of proof. Then you have clear and convincing evidence. Just a little bit more than preponderance, but less than beyond a reasonable doubt. In more serious cases, like like child protection cases, in um, you know where uh, where there's no jury but you have a judge, clear and convincing is is the standard. But then you have in jury trials all across the country, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Now keep in mind this: it's not up to a reasonable doubt. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. How much beyond? That's up for the jury. That's the eye of the beholder. And they're in charge of that, 100%. And it's the, the amount of care one would use in your most important affairs. That's the standard jury instruction universally. But it's not just up to that. It's beyond that. And, that, and so it's really, really a high, high burden. And that's why when you have documents that you fucking can't argue with, um, that that's powerful evidence. And, and there's nothing that... that Stormy, Stormy Daniels will testify, yeah, I said that, you know, in that letter, but it wasn't true, and I did get paid, and this is when I got paid, and this is why I got paid. <clears throat> then you have Michael Cohen who's going to testify, yeah, I went to prison, I went to prison because I lied, and I lied to Congress, and I lied to, to the feds, and, you know, I did so because I did it on Trump's behalf, and, uh, but this is what I did, and here are the documents to back it up. Alan Weisselberg, I bet you Alan Weisselberg doesn't testify, uh, I bet he'll rather go to prison than, than be disloyal to Trump because he's been a Trump loyalist from the day one, and I just doubt that he's going to um, break stride with that at this point. And then you've got you know, other people who are in the organizations, other people who would testify about this and that. All of their testimony is going to be backed up by business records and business records that you know ostensibly are going to be false. I don't think this is going to be a very difficult case for Alvin Bragg to, to prove. I just don't. Um, I, do I like to see somebody get convicted of anything? No, because that's what side I'm on. So I would love to see Trump win this case. But guess what? He hasn't won a fucking thing yet. You know, and why? Because his mouth and his actions get him in trouble. He's the absolute worst client one could have. And he doesn't pay his bills. Um, you got people who are around him right now. There's a lot of people that have left him. You know, and I don't know why they left. Maybe they had disagreements on on strategy or this or that, but they left him because you know, for whatever reason, you know. So, and he's spending like seventy six million dollars so far on legal bills. 
Give me some of that. <laughs> I'll fucking handle some of those. Hey, I'm kidding about that, but it really is staggering the amount of crap he has to go through between now and when the all, all four cases are done. And you, when you get to Jack Smith, he's a for, former uh, Hague prosecutor. He is no slouch when it comes to the courtroom. But we're still waiting for we're still waiting for the uh, Supremes to rule on whether he has immunity for anything he did as official acts while he was in uh, the White House. I don't think they're going to give him the ruling that he wants. I'd be shocked if they did. It would really, really put um, put a crimp in uh, this country's armor if all of a sudden you have a president who can do whatever the fuck they want, whenever the fuck they want, and be immune from prosecution completely. There, there will be some situations where some somebody will have to be immune. Like, for example, if uh, a terror, so an American citizen became a terrorist and went overseas and you know was on the battlefield and was killed uh, in action. You know, would the president be immune from that? That seems to make sense. But if during his campaign, <clears throat> if during campaign he uh, breaks into uh, a hotel called the Watergate or at least fun, uh, funds it and then tries to cover it up. Would he be immune from that? Is that an official act of a president? No, it's not. And neither is holding all these documents once you leave office. Anyway, those, that's the kind of, those are the issues that are before the courts. And, um, and then you've got the Fannie Willis thing, which was just a shit show. She really made, um, she really made, had unforced errors in that case. Um, why she got involved with somebody who was on the case or why she appointed somebody on the case and either got involved with him before or after. Just she created, you know, a problem for herself. So I am fascinated by this because this is what I do. And you should be too because it's our country, you know, and a lot is in the balance. So we'll follow Trump and I hope you continue to tune in. If you're a Patreon member, remember what we said, Send us your address. We'll send you a hat. You sign up for Patreon right now. We'll get you a hat. This is a limited kind of deal that we're going to do until we run out. And we'll order more. <clears throat> but you sign up for Patreon and we'll get you a, a stop self snitching hat because we want to get the word out, right? We'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Reaction to the anatomy of Trump's next trial on Monday. So I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified, your board certified criminal defense lawyer. Bruce Rivers. With Michael Rivers, the content genius. You can't be us. We're amazing. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on uh, Facebook. Subscribe. TikTok. <clears throat> Twitter. Or X. And, uh, and sign up for Patreon. You get a hat. See you next time. You're on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers is broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.